this work is so important. Let me talk a little bit about the Lower Churchill. The yes. Premier kind of knocked me on my pins this week. I was of the belief, you know, you know me, I'm a, I'm a, a conspiracy theorist, that in reality the deal with the Lower Churchill and Quebec Hydro was a deal that was going to be done, that at some point we would be flowing power through there. The Amira deal was like, you know, the first toe in the water. Uh, we were going to be doing this deal, and uh, down the road somewhere this was all going to happen. I'm listening to the Premier this week, and his commentary is less than uh, kind. He's actually saying that Quebec Hydro, to my surprise, is being a stumbling block every opportunity they get, and I'm, I'm shocked by that. Well, that, that, unfortunately, that's the case. Uh, you know, we're in a situation in this country that we have to rely on, on regulatory requirements in the United States in order to wheel our power through our own country. That in and of itself is, uh, I, I believe, an embarrassing situation for a country to find itself. Well, yes, that's ridiculous. Yes. So because of the commercial arrangements that Quebec has in the United States, they have to provide reciprocity. So what the FERC regulations say is if you're going to wheel electricity through our states, then other states or utilities or whatever have to be able, or provinces, have to be able to wheel electricity through your state or province. And it's under that requirement that we have these applications, and you hear us talk about it, our old open access transmission tariff applications. Right. We have these applications, and we have been successful, and which was a red-letter day here in Newfoundland and Labrador. We have been successful in one of our applications to wheel our recall power now from border to border. Up to that point, we could only bring our power to from the Labrador border. to the border of Quebec. That's right. Right now, we can go with 300 megawatts right across Quebec to the border to New York, and uh, and we're doing that. And uh, but we, you know, we need to have the ability to wheel more power through Quebec in context of the Lower Churchill, first of all. But also, you know, we always have our eye on 2041, and when we have, you know, the Upper Churchill comes back into and in the hands of the province. So we, you know, we have to look out that far ahead, and we have to look now. But Even though but we'll be long gone out of absolutely, here. Absolutely, but there's money in this for the province of Quebec. The Lower Churchill has a potential to generate, you know, some good dollars for uh, the province of Quebec and Quebec Hydro. This is not a this is not a one man takes all arrangement. And I'm just surprised to hear that, in actual fact, Quebec Hydro, using whatever powers they can, are actually trying to stymie, slow down, delay, not allow Lower Churchill to go ahead, so that they can't carry the power at some point. They have their own system in there. They'll have beaten us to the punch kind of game. It's a, it's a shocking development. I mean, everybody in this province understands the, the unfairness of the Upper Churchill deal. By the way, so how, do they. And, and so do they. And so do they. No question. Understand it sometimes better than we do. You know, the Premier has gone to Quebec and gone to Premier Charest and, you know, we've had Nalcor visit, you know, Hydro-Quebec, I've been meeting with ministers and so on, and we say to them, okay, you know, we'll set the Upper Churchill to one side, but, you know, let's sit down and have a talk about this Lower Churchill piece. You know, we know that we have to have a win-win situation here, because we, as I've said earlier this week, we know that if you don't have win-win, and you have win and poison pill because that's what we've got that's on it. the Upper Churchill. That's what we got. So we can have a win-win situation. We know that you, if you come in here in any kind of a, as an equity player, that you have to have a good return on your investment. And we want you to have a good return on your investment. But it also has to be a good deal for the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. Now, we have been with that message back and forth for five years. No, sir. No, sir. There is no takeoff on that on on that proposal. You know, we are do, so we are going to use the processes that are available to us. It is extremely frustrating though when they you know, when they slow down those processes, when objections are lodged against us and so on, because it is really difficult to understand why you wouldn't come into an arrangement that's win win. But why particularly 
in the particular circumstance that Newfoundland and Labrador and Quebec find itself and the unfairness of the Upper Churchill deal, that in fact you wouldn't be anxious to do that. You would think they would want to. You think they would want to have, uh, you know, just a trade-off, one good partnership. They haven't got to give up anything. They just got to have put one good partnership in place. So I don't know why. They, I don't know why that. I'm surprised. I thought they wanted that. You see, that's why I'm saying I, I had this. I'm really kind of like knocked off my pins because I thought they were sitting there waiting for us to come to them. We have been, we've got a path beaten to their door, and uh, and they will not take up, you know, the proposal, as I said, that we have put. We see enormous opportunity here for ourselves, first of all, for the maritime provinces, for Quebec and Ontario. I mean, we have been promoting an east-west grid in this country for six years. And, and it's needed. And we talk about it, uh, you know, and we have pushed this issue to the top of the priority list in terms of discussions, you know, uh, right across the country. I mean, the Premier led the COF uh, energy plan development. It was talked about there. I mean, people, we had the pen in our hand mm -hmm. on the development of that strategy. And people laughed at us when we, when we talked about what we saw as priorities and what we wanted to see in the plan. They told us we'd never make it happen. It happened. It happened under the leadership of the of the premier. And this COP energy plan has been the most widely distributed, is the most uh, downloaded government document uh, in terms of cost materials in the country. Uh, you know, we have it in our own energy plan. We talk about it. You know, premier time. It's an issue at COP. It's an issue at first ministers meetings and so on. And you know, it is gaining momentum because it is extremely important. For Ontario, who you know finds itself you in think the we're ever going to just just very quickly because I know I got I got I got to end here. But do you really think in your heart that we are going to be able to through these what are really American laws going to be able to wield power through the province of Quebec and that Ottawa is going to stand by our side when when the time you know to force that we don't need Ottawa. Well, we, we, this process, unless Quebec is prepared, going to be prepared to stop selling energy into the United States, which is very unlikely, no, uh, then we have that regulatory process. And I tell you, I am as sure as I am sitting here that we will wheel power through this country into the United States and we'll do it in a way that serves the interests of the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. It is an effort that might take us a little while to do it. And, you know, we've got substantial uh, uh, entities and governments trying to interfere with that process. But, you know, given the team that the Premier has put together at Nalcor, given the, the, the strategy that we've developed, given the focused, methodical, uh, strategic way that we're doing this, which is why we're going back into the House next week, not because there's any big thing, but, you know, we've got a process laid out. We're going to follow it. We're not going to delay three months. Let's just go in and get it straightened up and, and, and let things proceed. But you will see the development of the Lower Churchill uh, in our lifetime and long before that for the benefit of the people in Newfoundland and Labrador. You know, it's just crazy mm -hmm. in a country like this where there's so much opportunity. And just let me end up with this piece. We, we have done energy studies in the U.S. and what's required just on the eastern seaboard for them to meet their low demands and meet their uh, carbon uh, emissions deductions and so on. And a conservative estimate is that they would need 75 terawatts of power to do that. If we developed everything we had here in the province, wind, solar, wave, everything, and the same thing, we did it all in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick and, uh, and PEI and so on, we would only be able to meet 25 terawatts of that demand with everything developed. Yeah. So there's huge opportunity here yeah. for all of us mm -hmm. and win-win for every, for every one of us. And so in the face of that, you know, some of the resistance we're getting is even more disturbing and puzzling. Uh, Minister Kathy Dunderdale, Minister of Natural Resources, good to speak with you this morning. I look forward to talking with you about this as it continues to develop in the future. Absolutely. Thank have you a, very much. You have a good weekend. Bye now. Take care. Bye-bye. See? You learn something new every day, and that's stuff that I'm learning that's brand new to me today. I didn't know. I really didn't know that we had those kind of roadblocks up in front of us, and why. But now I'm starting to understand that. Not going to be an easy job to get done, this one. Two seven three five two one one one.